when a hawk eagle appears soaring high over the clearing. The group foraging on the ground will burst into flight, not to return to the ground for an hour or more. So if these places are so frightening to the birds, it raises the obvious question. What is so great about these areas? Why fly for miles and miles just to come here? Clearly there must be something valuable about these sites, or the animals wouldn't expend so much energy and time getting here. Although the details vary from place to place, the big attraction appears to be some combination of the minerals available such as sodium and calcium, as well as the properties of the soil itself. Of course, eating minerals can offset a diet that is deficient, sort of like taking a mineral supplement, so that part is easily understood. But the clay story is a little more complicated. Clays are remarkable because they can act like chemical sponges in the digestive tract of animals, where they can soak up toxins in the animal's diets. So it turns out that foraging at the clearings may enable the parrots, the elephants, and the other animals to live on foods that are inadequate in terms of essential minerals, as well as laden with toxic chemicals. Soil eating by birds and by mammals is actually common all over the world. In fact, a very close parallel to these clearings in Africa occurs in South America. Here in Peru, the similarly sized Amazon parrots and their kin, these are mealy Amazons, consume clay at a riverbank in Manu National Park. The ecological parallels of the sites in Africa and Peru are quite striking, although the cast of characters in each case is different. In the Neotropics, the visitors include these macaws, tapirs, and in rare cases, even spider monkeys. So we have a sense for what the benefits might be, and they apparently outweigh the risks of the hawks and eagles. But there must be some other drawbacks as well. All these animals visiting one site for extended periods must also make the clearings good places to pick up diseases and parasites, much as concentrations of humans have done throughout history. But perhaps more importantly, the concentrations of wildlife must also attract mammalian predators as well. In this case, mostly predators of the human kind. Although hunting of large mammals has been common at many clearings, and presumably has been so throughout history, the really lucrative strategy is to catch parrots alive and export them to foreign countries. The demand for African greys as pets in developed countries is a powerful market force that reaches all the way back to the forests of Africa, where locals are well aware of the money they can make by catching and selling wild parrots. They, of course, have no idea how this process works. They simply know that they can sell the birds for good money in the nearest town. That's all they need to know to make this work. The trappers start early in the morning, selecting a site where the birds have descended before. They place their traps out in the middle of the clearing, they camouflage them well, and they bait them using two different strategies. The first is to use live gray parrots as collars or living decoys. These are usually birds that have been captured here previously, possibly even the day before. Some are placed in trees, and these are called appellons, or collar birds. Since most parrots have a healthy fear of coming to the ground, most of them wait for another bird to perch low in the trees before they take the risk to descend. By placing the appellon low in the trees, the trappers encourage the wild birds to come to the trapping site and to move close to the ground. Once they're there, they encounter the second strategy. They see the decoy birds that are placed on the ground directly in front of the traps. The trapping sites are supplemented with special plants that the birds are after. So the wild birds arrive, they see the tether birds, and lo and behold, there are parrots there already on the ground, feasting on the tasty treats. The trappers hide in a blind they've built nearby out of local materials. 
well camouflaged with palm fronds and other vegetation. From here, they can watch the birds arrive and trigger the traps at just the right moment to catch as many birds as possible in each trap. They'll have just this one chance to catch the birds on any given day, so the timing is critical. The whole setup with the blind, the traps, and the decoy birds is all riding on this one moment. Once the birds get up their nerve to land on the ground, they immediately begin to eat plants and soil and to drink the water. And of course, the more that arrive, the more attractive the site becomes to all the other greys in the area. They are nervous though. Maybe some have been near the trapper's blinds before, and they remember their near capture experience. The whole flock bursts into flight several times at the slightest provocation.